What's going on, folks? Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and let's go ahead and continue on our 2024 class-based coverage. Now, obviously, we had a little break as some, you know, it's officially been released on D&D Beyond and otherwise, and that actually is going to benefit us quite a lot here on these videos because the free rules have been released, and as such, we can actually just pull up on D&D Beyond the Cleric, the whole base class, and the Light Domain to just look at that on screen without having to do the back and forth for Unearthed Arcana, as it's just available for everyone who has the Master Tier subscription for free and will be available to the public on the 17th. But before we dive into that, I actually wanted to talk to you a little bit about an upcoming event that actually starts tomorrow, and is if you're looking to play the 2024 Core Rules, and hey, if you love the D&D cartoon as well, then do our friends over at Start Playing have something pretty interesting for you. And this is their Player's Handbook Celebration, which kicks off tomorrow, September 6th, and is going to run through October 7th. We can also see right here the updated art showcasing all of the characters from the cartoon in a more updated, older version of themselves. And it says, Dungeons & Dragons is partnering with Start Playing for the 2024 Player's Handbook Celebration. Join the adventures with an exclusive event. And this is important because there's an adventure that you can't play anywhere else, at least as far as we know right now. Um, jump into an adventure. Plus, some Dungeon Masters are running a D&D Beyond exclusive adventure, Uni and the Hunt for the Lost Horn, which brings the beloved characters from the iconic 80s D&D cartoon into the spotlight. Play as fourth level characters and unravel the mystery of Uni the Unicorn's Stolen Horn, all while utilizing the new 2024 Player's Handbook rules. This event is part of the D&D 50th Anniversary Play Series, making it an unmissable celebration for both new and veteran players. Sign up for a game, and you can scroll down here and see, right here is one available Thursday at noon Eastern Time. 25 bucks a session. There are four seats left with David the Avid DM, and you can scroll through here and see a bunch of folks are looking to start brand new things to jump into the 2024 rules, right? Dive into D&D 2024, a murder in Baldur's Gate. That was one of the original D&D uh, &D Next adventures, which is when the transition from 4th to 5th happened. Here's a Learn to Play 2024 Stormwreck Isle, and then there's a bunch of other ones if you just want to click through here. Some folks starting new things. Uh, again, some are, you know, fresh for new folks. Some are for looking for veterans, Curse of Straw, Dragons of Phandalin, some homebrew stuff. A little bit of information here is FAQs, right? How do I sign up? Basically make an account and then go ahead and figure that out from there. So thank you again to Devin and the Star Playing team for sponsoring this video. You guys are awesome, and I love Star Playing. Uh, they're a great resource and a great way if you want to start jumping into DMing professionally for yourself. So... Let's jump over and now talk about our friend, the Cleric. And honestly, this one, since we don't have to do the comparison to the Unearthed Arcana for the base class, we're just going to talk about it. So one thing you'll notice is that, uh, again, from the base, you're still seeing light and medium armor and shields and simple weapons. So nothing's really changed as far as the training goes. Uh, and then we can dive in to... Uh, here now one thing you'll probably I don't think I've actually touched on it is the number of prepared spells for each class is a static number now previously it used to be x number you know uh, you're usually your level plus your wisdom modifier for the cleric or whatever it is it is now a standard set number so for 2024 clerics you're going to get four prepared spells up to a maximum of 22 prepared spells at level 20 Meaning previously it would have been something like 25 if you had a uh, 20 in your wisdom score. Now it caps out at 22. So less overall spells prepared per day. So keep that in mind. We can kind of scroll down and see. Again, it talks a little bit about it here. Also it does give you kind of suggestions for what you might want to use. But first up, we get a choice at first level called Divine Order. This kind of has replaced what was a lot of the previous subclasses that had the ability to do things like some just got bonus proficiencies, others got other little things at level one. So now you make a choice at level one. Do you want to be a protector, which is going to give you proficiency in all martial weapons and heavy armor, or a thaumaturge, which gives you an extra cleric cantrip, and in addition, you get a wisdom modifier bonus to arcana and religion checks <sighs> to me this is kind of a no-brainer i would always go for protector i'd say probably nine times out of ten for the heavy armor and the martial weapons nothing's saying you need to use heavy armor but 
you could still be a light armor wearing cleric, but still having access to all martial weapon proficiency is pretty nice. Then at level two, you get channel divinity. Another thing to note is you do get more channel divinity uses than you did in the past. It used to be one and then a second use at six and then a final use at like 16, I think. Now you're going to have a total of four, but you have more earlier access over time and one more overall. So you can use channel divinity to do a variety of different things. You regain one use of a channel divinity when you finish a short rest and all on a long rest. Previously in 2014, it was you got them all back on a short rest. I'm fine with this change. You're still going to have one on a short rest, which is nice. And you still have your extra uses if you need them throughout the day. Spell save DC is the same DC for your channel divinity. Well, you now have two options at second level. Previously, uh, base clerics just got turn undead. You now also have Divine Spark, which is roll a d8 and add your Wisdom modifier. You uh, restore hit points equal to the number amount on there or force a creature to make a saving throw. Constitution save. If they fail, they're going to take either Necrotic or Radiant, your choice of that much. And this dice will increase at 2d8 at 7, 3d8 at 13, and 4d8 at 18. I like this. This is a nice little thing, especially if your subclass doesn't have a means of healing directly from a channel divinity use. This is a nice way to get just a little quick heal that, again, is uh, similar to like an older version of a Cure Wounds, but it's at range. Or you can use it for its more traditional use as just Turn Undead, which seems to function largely like it did in 2014. Uh, the undead creatures must make a wisdom save or be frightened and incapacitated for a minute. And then they have to, uh, you know, it can't move closer towards you. you. Get your subclass at three. Ability score improvements are the same. Then you get Seer Undead at level five. This was previously called the Destroy Undead, which was a cool feature, but it only worked on lower level undead. This is whenever you use Turn Undead, you can roll a number of D8s equal to your Wisdom modifier, which is a minimum of one, and add those rolls together. Each undead that fails its saving throw against your turn undead is going to take that amount in Radiant Damage. In my opinion, this is uh, a much better effect than Destroy Undead. Uh, again, Destroy Undead didn't have... Um, it just kind of went off. This is, if they fail the saving throw, they're going to take damage, which is great because that means things that might have been too powerful to be turned in the past or to be destroyed via turn undead in the past will still take some damage. And it's undead, so radiant damage is usually a pretty solid bet on what to use against them. All right, now at level 7, uh, this is the first time that your choice you make here is going to actually impact something later on. But you're basically going to choose what type of cleric do you want to focus in more on. Do you want to be more of a melee weapon cleric or more of a casting cleric? If you choose Divine Strike, once when you hit a creature on your turn, you can cause it to take an extra D8 Necrotic or Radiant damage. Or add your Wisdom modifier to any cleric cantrips that you cast. Pretty solid overall. Level 10, you get Divine Intervention, which is now, as a magic action, choose any cleric level uh, of sp uh, spell level of level 5 or lower that doesn't cause a cost a reaction to cast. As part of the same action, you cast the spell without spending any material components or using a spell slot, and you get this once per long rest. This is a lot more usable than the previous version of Divine Intervention, which was rolling a percentile and hoping to roll under your level. This is usable all the time. It gets you access to a cleric spell of level 5 or lower. This does allow for some wonky stuff. For example, you could use this in theory to cast the Hallow spell, which is pretty powerful, but normally takes a longer casting time. You could cast this as an action now. And this is usable once per long rest, so you're basically getting a freebie up to 5th level cleric spell without expending spell slot or material components, which also means that you could do something like Raise Dead with Divine Intervention without needing a diamond. 14 is improved blessed strikes which is basically just going to jump up what you got at what you pick at seven the divine strike increases to 2d8 and then the potent spell casting is when you cast a cantrip and deal damage to a creature you can give some of its vitality to somebody else within 60 feet granting them temporary hit points equal to twice your wisdom modifier get your epic boon at 19 and then at level 20 you get greater divine intervention which is when you use it you can choose to cast the wish spell if you do so, you can't use it again until you finish 2d4 long rests. That's a pretty solid, uh, again, I kind of like the old Divine Intervention because it was very up to the DM to interpret, but that also could potentially leave some DMs in a, you know, a lack of what to do because it's basically 
who knows what you're going to pick. Uh, the, you know, you beseech for help and the DM could interpret it one way. You might have meant it another way. This gives you codified kind of what you can do with it. Then we get the entire cleric spell list here, which again, all of the classes spell lists are contained within the class section of the player's handbook. There's obviously also listed out next to the spells when you get to that later on. First up of our subclasses is the Life Domain Cleric. This one remained largely unchanged from its unchanged rather from its 2014 version. You're going to get obviously just things are going to be bumped up to level three for your starting uh, subclass levels here. So Aid, Bless, Cure Wounds, Lesser Restoration at level three, Mass Healing Ward, Revivify at five, Aura of Life, Death Ward at seven, and Greater Restoration, Cure Wound, Mass Cure Wounds at nine. You're still going to get Preserve Life. There's just going to be some changes here where it's going to use the magic action as opposed to an action. And it's going to say choose bloodied creatures, which means creatures with less than half health within 30 feet. Divide your hit, pung, uh, hit points among them. Uh, none of them can restore a creature to more than half its hit point maximum. So that's basically the same. When you cast with Blessed Healer, immediately after you cast a spell with a spell... Oh, did I miss one? I did. Disciple of Life up earlier. I'm sorry. Uh, when you heal a creature with hit, uh, with a spell, additional hit points are healed equal to two plus the spell slots level. So if you cast cure wounds on somebody, you're going to heal them for the base heal plus an additional three hit points. All right. Now we get on to blessed healer immediately after you cast a spell with a spell slot that restores hit points to one or more creatures other than yourself, you get hit points equal to two plus the spell slots level. So a little retribution for healing when you're healing somebody else. And lastly, Supreme Healing at 17 is just you don't longer need to roll when healing. You just heal the max amount. So if you're going to heal somebody for 2d8, you now just heal them for 16 instead. Next up, we're going to jump over to the Unearthed Arcana to talk about the Light Domain, which is one of my favorite ones to play in Baldur's Gate. Let's see how things change here because, again, we don't have it in the free rules. Burning Hands, Fairy Fire, Scorching Race, Sea Invisibility. Ah, uh, in the ah, uh, okay. So in the Unearthed Arcana, it was Moonbeam. They've replaced Moonbeam for Scorching Ray. I appreciate that change. Daylight and Fireball, Arcane Eye, Wall of Fire, Flame Strike, and Scrying. That's the same. All right. Now Warding Flare uh, is listed here in the Unearthed Arcana. It's uh, you know choose a creature within thirty feet. Use your reaction to impose disadvantage. Um causing the light to flare before it hits or misses it says i'm sorry uh yes here it is disadvantage on the attack roll causing light to hit before it hits or misses and it is still wisdom modifier times prolonged rest i feel that that's odd because i thought for a lot of the stuff we switched to proficiency bonus times prolonged rest but it seems like for clerics they're keeping wisdom modifier all right so that's basically the same Again, different from um, back in 2014, because you can also use this now on allies. It used to be originally just for you. Now it works for allies at level three. And then you have Radiance of Dawn. Present your holy symbol. Um, emit a flash of light in a 30-foot emanation. Dispels magical darkness. Each creature of your choice must make a constitution saving throw or take radiant damage equal to 2d10 plus your cleric level, which is pretty solid overall we had here what was called revealing light in the unearthed arcana which was a bonus action present your holy symbol cast c invisibility that has been replaced with improved warding flare in the 2024 player's handbook which says you regain all uses of your warding flare when you finish a short or long rest here it was you got them back when you finish a long rest i really like this change to just make that a more available thing for you and in addition whenever you use warding flare you can give the target of the triggering attack temporary hit points equal to 2d6 plus your wisdom modifier so not only are you solar flaring these people you're also giving somebody a little mini sensu bean while you activate your solar flare which is pretty cool and then lastly we have our corona of light ability at 17 which is uh you emit bright light in a 60 foot radius dim light in another 30 feet your enemies in the bright light, which is, again, that 60, initial 60 feet, have disadvantage on saving throws against your Radiance of Dawn and any spell that deals fire or radiant damage. And this is, again, uh, huh. interestingly enough, this, in the Unearthed Arcana, didn't have a limitation. 
you could just do this on limited amounts of times, according to what's written here. This has been changed in the final version to be uh, wisdom modifier times per long rest. Once again, keeping that wisdom modifier there. So that's a bummer. It was unlimited. I'm sure that was unintentional here in the Unearthed Arcana, but either way. Next up here is the Trickery Domain, which is going to give you... Uh, let's see. Am I missing one? No, okay. Trickery Domain is going to give you Charm Person, Disguise Self, Invisibility, Pass Without Trace... Hypnotic Pattern, Non-Detection, Confusion Dimension Door. Uh, it was Dominate. Here was Hold Monster and Mislead. It's now Dominate Person and Modify Memory in the final product. I think that fits. Uh, okay. So, first up, Blessing of the Trickster. As a magic action, choose yourself or willing creature within 30 feet to get advantage on stealth checks for an hour. Um, this was an hour in the Unearthed Arcana here, it is this lasts until you, you finish a long rest or until you use this feature again. This is much better. Lasting until a long rest means you can constantly rely on this if you want to just cast it on yourself or give it to an ally to use for as long as necessary, which I like that change a lot. All right, Invoke Duplicity, the whole big thing about being a Trickery Domain Cleric. This is a bonus action. It lasts for one minute, uh, but you can dismiss it early. Mimics you. Uh, all right, you can cast spells as though you were in the illusion's space, but you must use your own senses. Distract when you and your illusion within five feet of a creature that can see it. They have You have advantage on attack rolls against the creature. And then move. You can move it up to 30 feet, but it uh, to a space you can see within 120 feet of yourself. Um, it does not have the ability for you to teleport swapping places which is something that's in the Unearthed Arcana. It's not here in the initial usage of it in the final player's handbook. All right, you get uh, what was here was Trickster's Magic, which is if you cast a spell of the Illusion School, you can change it to a bonus action, Wisdom Modifier times per long rest. Now it is Trickster's Transposition. Whenever you take the bonus action to create or move the Illusion, you can teleport swapping places. So they kind of shifted what was a uh, kind of a built-in feature. It's now replaced the sixth level feature. And lastly, here we had improved duplicity, which was you can create, uh, what is it? In, a, in addition, uh, you create it, you can, has grown more powerful. When you create it, you can teleport it up to 120 feet, move it 30 feet. And when you move it, you can move it up to 60 feet rather than 30 feet. In addition, when you or your allies make attack rolls against a creature within five feet of it, the attack rolls have advantage. And finally, when the illusion ends, you or a creature your choice within five feet of it regains a number of hit points equal to your cleric level. Now it states, uh, when you and your allies make attack rolls against a creature within five feet of the illusion, the attack rolls have advantage. Just kind of clean that up a little bit. So get within the close to the get basically pack tactics. And when the illusion ends, you or a creature of your choice within five feet of it regain a number of hit points equal to your cleric level. So that's pretty much the same. Uh, does not have the ability to teleport it uh, up to 120 feet, though. Uh, it was able to move that distance up to 120 feet uh, that you could see uh, 30 feet at a time. But here it had a teleport. You don't have that anymore. And lastly, we have the War Domain Cleric, which has uh, here at a Divine Favor Magic Weapon, Shield of Faith, Spiritual Weapon. It has Guiding Bolt, Magic Weapon, Shield of Faith, Spiritual Weapon. I'm in favor of switching it out for Guiding Bolt. Crusader's Mantle, Spirit Guardians, yep. Freedom of Movement here in Stone Skin. They added Fire Shield in place of Stone Skin. And then uh, this was Destructive Wave Hold Monster. It's now Hold Monster Steel Wind Strike, which I kind of like better. Um, all right, next up we have the uh, War Priest, which I really liked some of this. We got away from a lot of this, which was you have training with weapons that allow you to use the mastery property of one kind of simple or martial weapon, and you could swap that out on a long rest, and then you can make your bonus action attacks a number of times equal to your Wisdom Modifier and you regain all uses when you finish a short or long rest. They've ditched the non, uh, the language there, rather, I was going to say nonsense, the language about the mastery property, so that is not available to the cleric, but as a bonus action, you can still make the attacks with your weapon or an unarmed strike, 
Uh, and again, uh, a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier. You regain all uses when you finish a short or long rest. Uh, we also have Guided Strike here, which is when you are a creature within 30 feet of you misses with an attack roll. You can use your reaction to expend one of your channel divinity to give a plus 10 bonus uh, to the roll, potentially causing it to hit. And it says when you use this feature to benefit another creature's attack roll, you must take a reaction to do so. Because um, obviously you can just... It says for you, when you miss uh, a creature within 30 feet, you can expend a thing and then uh, get that bonus. So it is not, it's just a freebie thing for you to do when you use it to benefit a different creature's attack in each your reaction. But if you're using it for yourself, it just kind of happens. Which I like. There's a small little distinction, but it makes it a lot more useful. Here, War God's Blessing was Shield of Faith. Um, on a, whenever you cast it on another creature, it also affects you, which was a cool kind of dual Shield of Faith thing going on. And in addition... When you cast a spell, uh, you can cast the spell once without expending a spell slot, once per short or long rest. This has been changed to you can cast with your channel divinity, shield of faith, or spiritual weapon without expending a spell slot. But when you do so, uh, the spell doesn't require concentration. Instead, it lasts for one minute, but it ends early if you cast the spell again, have the incapacitated condition, or die. So we're basically giving the war god the ability to cast shield of faith and spiritual weapon in a shortened one-minute version that does not require concentration, which is pretty powerful overall. I like that a lot, especially given the fact that they've changed spiritual weapon to be concentration. This makes the war domain a lot better option if you're just looking to do that. And then similarly, pretty simple. Lastly, uh, resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage that hasn't changed. So there you go, folks. That is my rundown on the 2024 cleric overall. I like it. I like a lot of the changes to the subclasses. I think they're all pretty clean in my opinion. And I think the few adjustments to the base classes, I think, in fact, are pretty solid. The changes to Seer Undead, the way you're choosing the different options and kind of making your path choice for what you want to do as far as more damage or maybe more scholarly things or more spells. And the changes to Divine Intervention, while maybe more limited in some degree than the previous versions, um, I don't know. I kind of like it. I have to try it out and play to really see what I feel about it. But I'm also curious what all of you have to say. So let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. I'll see you all next time.